overview faculty, student outcome, alignment with early care and school standards, uh, alignment, and, uh, pardon me, assignments and in-class activities, worksheets and self-assessment boards and suggestions for how to adapt material. Uh, to be more specific about module six, that alignment with other early care and switch standards piece is right there in that introduction that I mentioned earlier on page four, and really does a very clear crosswalk with alignment with NAEC standards, COA, competency goals, military school assessment system, competency standards, and mock course competencies for active educators. So those are um, right at your fingertips in introduction if you download it. And each of the modules has between three or four 12 student assignments, and as I mentioned earlier, module six has 12 that are um, available for use. And for the convenience of faculty, we provide worksheets that students can complete and hand in and submit, as well as self-assessment forms and suggestions for adaptation. So on the next slide, you'll see um, and then <coughs> allude to this, some of our thinking behind why to add a module six, and I, I don't think that that's much of a sell for this group. <laughs> I think folks easily come up with many more reasons than the two that are on this slot, but really um, the, the, the value of doing this work to really support the care and professional professionalization of uh, the child and youth development field and being able to offer an easy to use tool can help uh, students in that field improve practice. Um, we also uh, alluded to the fact that we have done a prior webinar on this work and truly is a priority for the Office of Child Care as well. Shannon Grudisville, the Associate Director of the Office of Child Care was on that webinar and talked about the importance of focusing in on these tools for school child care workers and uh, being able to support a variety of folks in this field in a variety of settings in, to be able to keep kids engaged during the uh, school time hours. On the next slide, we are actually one level down. You can think about how the, uh, a couple of slides back, I showed you a list of all six modules. Now what we are looking at on this slide is a list of subtopics within Model 6, so exclusively within the school age children module, what are some of the subtopics that, that that module addresses? And so truly you can see to the titles, these subtopics range from everything from looking at developmental characteristics and needs of school age children to doing an in-depth look and breakdown of the various terminology used for school age, after school, out of school time which is various curricula or program designs for out school programming and more deeply at the benefits of participation. Um, and just to unpack a little bit that last bullet, bullet six, clearly the last piece is policies of assisting programs for school-aged children, and the piece covers things like licensing and RIS systems, quality rating and improvement systems, also touches on looking at funding for school-age programs, and it actually encouraged students in one of the activities to conduct an interview with an existing program to get a very in-person and personal hands-on example of that. So that's the broad range of subtopics that are covered in Module 6. The next slide actually goes yet another level down. So we saw all the subtopics in Module 6. Now we're looking at one of those subtopics in greater detail. It's subtopic two, entitled the school age field and overview. And there's actually two associated exercises um, with that particular subtopic. And this is really the field that goes more deeply into the wide variety of settings, programming options that are undertaken around school age care. Um, it encourages students to really understand the various terms that are used to describe the field and, and, and stay in earnest to actually dig a bit deeper and understand the research associated with these terms um, and get a very good sense of who be some of the common authors are researching topics of interest to these students uh, so that they're really able to have a good sense of that. And uh, in the first activity, they, they really get a chance to do that in the second activity takes that work to the next level and encourages those students to go back and refine their searches and, and get a deep sense of how they might 
um, develop skill set to get results around the topic areas, from research connection searches, and then focus and filter those results by, again, a refined and specific interests that those students might have. And we've got, as mentioned, an example um, on the next page. And I think we can go ahead and click the slide to number then a module activity, um, which gives the uh, background that a, a school member might read in that introduction piece that I alluded to earlier, offering just tips and questions and background and overview of the tools that are available. If you go ahead and switch to the next slide, you can see the companion worksheet that goes with um, the birds that view of the school age. And this is where you can really uh, break down and see how uh, the students are asked to uh, systematically and iteratively go through a research section search around with some of the different search terms or school age child care, after school programs at school time. There is a section off to the hand side for notes where students are asked to do some reflection based on what they come up with in their research connection search and make the application to how that affects their learning overall in the field and how that affects their practice if they, if they are already in the field. Um, so we encourage faculty members and other instructors to, to go out to the site, take a look at these activities, really to select those that uh, resonate most and adapt them as needed. In this case, as I alluded to earlier, the first activity is a search around school age, child care, after school programs, some of the terms that are mentioned in the field, and the next companion exercise then asks students to go the next step and actually refine those terms. So for example, if a student had school age child care, then the first exercise might pick school age quality or school age arts, school age inclusion um, in the second search. Likewise, if they had been after school or after school time, they do a similar refinement. Um, just as a, an example, um, the school age inclusion uh, search would come up with 3,198 results. I was on the site this morning just getting a, a up to the minute example of how many resources were in it. And as you can imagine, that's a lot of results. And so they're able through the exercise pamphlet to help students then go back and some filters. Do they want only the results that are full text? Do they want only the results that are peer reviewed journal articles? Do they want only the results that are reports or papers or fact sheets or briefs? They can search by author, they can search by date. Um, and then that exercise, not up here, but works hand in glove with this one uh, by extending the lessons learned. Um, help folks through and filter the search state, for example. And then finally, give folks instructions to save and uh, receive updates on a given search via an RSS feed. So, Again, highly customizable. The RSS feed is as far as you'd like to take students, then you could use that entire second exercise. Um, you may elect to use just a portion of any one of these two exercises. So um, this is, if we switch to the next slide, slide number 13, this is really some examples and some thoughts that we have here at the Fiscal Investment Project around how you might be able to use these materials. Um, to integrate into existing uh, courses, to use an entire set of subtopics and activities in a specialized course, um, to use the materials as part of ongoing professional development for personnel in the school age field, and to use the material to enrich uh, credential or certificate program. Um, but there may be other ways you might think about using these tools, and so we again, highly encourage folks to think of how they might use these tools. Um, and, and this actually concludes my prepared remarks, so I'm going to ask Amy, just do a visual for me in the room and see if there's any immediate questions, and we can address those immediately. And if not, what I'd like to do is spend another 10, 15 minutes going through sort of a lot, switching from the slot deck to a live internet um, walkthrough of the seat itself. 
Great, thank you, Jennifer. I saw a webinar about these resources back uh, last fall and was very excited and, and knew then we wanted to bring it to your attention um, at this event. So Jennifer, thank you for walking us through uh, the module and giving us some examples. Are there any immediate questions before we move into the next mode? Great question, Jennifer. That was regarding, is there a specific login and passwords for this site, or how does that work? Great. Um, no, absolutely. There's no um, need for a specific login. The site is just kind of a ready resource that's easy to use. If you are using the search site itself, and we can we make this apparent through a little bit of a walkthrough, um, the bar is one of the most. Um, clearly located I've seen on the website, it's just right in the upper left hand corner and immediately jump into the database and search collection. Very clear, very easy to use uh, search function in the upper left hand corner of the page. If you're looking for the faculty teaching module, again, no logs required and I can look through where on the site to find those. Great. Other questions? Okay, no other questions at this time, Jennifer. Great. Well, maybe Jimmy will uh, rely on to let me know if it's possible to switch over to the internet and um, would love to walk folks through those two pieces. A, where to find the database itself, and B, where to find the faculty teaching module. Yes, we do have internet access, Jennifer. Would you like me to go to researchconnections.org first? Please, that's okay. perfect. And both resources are on that site. So if you are on the Research Connection site, um, Jamie, I'm, you confirm? Yes, we are, we are up and running, Jennifer. Brilliant. Okay. So let's go ahead and use this. We'll, we'll, we'll retest um, my results and see if any new sources have been added to the database in the last uh, two hours since I went online this morning. Let's go ahead and use that school age inclusion uh, term just by way of something that we recently been talking about. Um, and enter it into the search box, school age inclusion, and hit go. And I am doing parallel in parallel with you. Um, and when I do that search with no uh, height, I get the same number of results, 3,898. We have 1,198, but I'm wondering if, uh, yes, I put a hyphen, which I could perhaps go back and take out and see if we get the same number. Oops. Okay. Okay, yes, we're at the, the same page, Jennifer, 3,898 for school age inclusion. Brilliant. And you can see, again, I, I feel um, very comfortable and confident in saying that a, uh, a, a good deal of user friendliness is into this site, so um, it may not need explanation, but it's worth highlighting that, of course, all of the, the resources that are up here with you, you can see, have a little green asterisk button so that they immediately pop out. Something is a publication or a tool that is produced by research connections themselves. Uh, that is also annotated. But the filter results is what I was talking us through during the slide portion of the presentation. And I think it's worthwhile to take a moment to scroll down that hand bar so that you can really see the way that students and courses can filter their searches. So, for example, full text, peer reviewed journal articles resource top by author, et cetera. And actually, as a matter of fact, uh, let's go ahead down beyond author and publication date, filter by state, and I'm clicking now on North Carolina, which has 124 of those resources. Where do you go to do that, Jennifer, again? Uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to scroll down a bit, but uh -huh. there's one, two, three, four, five, Um, it should be a little bit more than six topics down. One, two, three, four, five.
I have to sit down and 